Mike Rob of Barataria, Louisiana. Uh, well, Tracy Kuhn, Barataria, Louisiana. We have a shrimp boat. Y'all are commercial fishermen? Yeah. Has this impacted your life? Extremely. In what ways? Camp fish. Waters are polluted. We're from the most severely impacted area in Louisiana. Absolutely. We're from the Barataria Bay. Grand Island on has been destroyed by Pull BP. On. You pull a, put a skull and crossbone on it. Our, they use the dispersants, in my opinion, to hide the oil. Yeah. Because the dispersants out of sit, sight, out of mind. It's not gone. It's still there. It is simply dispersed throughout the water column. It is all over the bottom. It's even in little slicks that people don't know who aren't fishermen and aren't used to looking in the water on top of our water. There's a glassy look to water. Our community is 150 miles inland from the Gulf of Mexico, from the original spill site. Yet we have dispersed oil in the canals behind my house and it's been there since June 6th. Inadequate testing is taking place. The FDA is doing sensory tests um, only. They are not doing um, tissue sampling of the seafood for dispersants. So when they keep saying it's safe, they don't really know that. They're just telling you for what they're sampling and the way they're doing it by smelling it. According to them, it's safe. But those tests have not been done. Adequate testing has not been done. What we're asking for is the, for them to stop the use of dispersants. Number one, we keep hearing that they haven't used them from July 19th, but what our fishermen are seeing that are out there is something else entirely. We still keep seeing that white foam that they've been spraying from the very beginning. Every time we see a pool of oil, the next morning we see all this white foam. That looks just like the dispersant. So, you know, to us that means if, if it looks like that, if it smells like that, then to us it's dispersant. And they're gonna have to prove to us that they're not doing it. They need to stop spraying dispersants immediately. We also need, like Kathy was saying, we need to distinguish for the consumers the difference between seafood caught prior to this oil spill that's in the freezers or, or was caught in areas that have never been impacted in the Gulf of Mexico so far that we're aware of. Um, that were never closed. And so we need funds to be available for each state so that we can have um, a verification program so the consumer can feel comfortable that our Gulf seafood, that it was in the freezers, that has not been impacted, um, it's safe for them to buy. But they can't tell the difference unless somebody does a process to identify that. Um, I want to say one more thing about those dispersants. They keep saying they use dispersants to protect the estuary and the marsh from the oil. The fact of the matter is they just dispersed it all over the place and when the tide came up, it went under the booms. When the tide came up, all the dispersant and water went right over the top of the marsh. So it actually made it impact a far greater area of marsh than it would have had they not used dispersant because they would have been able to capture it. The other thing is the health issues. All right, President Obama's over here in Florida and you look around and it doesn't seem to be as heavily impacted at this time as we are in Louisiana and in Mississippi and in Alabama. Why didn't the president, if he wanted to come down and see whether it's all gone, whether we could eat seafood, he should have come to our community in Barataria because we could have drenched him in oil. It's in the canal behind my home. My grandchildren can't swim in that water because there's dispersed oil in it. So if he wants 
to come down and see for himself. Come down to where it's heavily impacted still. Don't come to Florida and say everything's hunky-dory and fine and take your child swimming in these waters over here.